Welcome to New Stripe City, a YouTube channel for diehard Bengals fans. I'm your host, Ace Boogie, and we're here to do the Cut the Tape on series with Jackson Carmen. I'm joined uh, by my guy, JD. He's going to come in and provide uh, some film review breakdown for us. He's an aspiring scout, so we're going to get it popping. And I wanted to bring in somebody that I really respect. Me and my guy go all the way back to FAMU. Uh, we've always been huge in the sports. I respect his sport mind and his opinion. And so I decided to bring him on for us to – go ahead and do this and bring some unbiased kind of takes to some of these prospects. So the first game that we're going to look at, and it might potentially be the only one that we're going to look at, is the Clemson versus Ohio State 2019 game. And the reason that we picked this is because it was Jackson Carmen versus Chase Young. And Chase Young, um, this film is what I heard sold the Bengals on him or was a big factor in them taking him. And so we're going to take a look at Jackson Carmen. He's number 79. Uh, you guys probably know that right now. But without further ado, we'll go ahead and get into it. You ready, J.D.? Let's do it. Thanks again, man. I appreciate it. Oh, you already know. Let's get it. All right. So he's number 79. He's going to be at the left tackle position. That's him in the upper screen right there against Chase Young. Chase Young is obviously number two. Um, so here he is right here. You know, to me, it didn't look like Chase tried to do much on that play. Uh, yeah. It looks like it was just a run to, to Eddie in. All right. Might need to see that. And okay, let me see. Here we go. After looking, uh, cause I told you earlier before we met, um, I saw him against Miami. I believe it was Notre Dame, uh, Wake Forest from 2019. Right. Uh, so that last play you showed, um, it looked like it was against a man coverage a little bit. I can't yeah. really tell. Um, but he seemed to struggle with his uh, foot speed against outside the outside rush sometimes. Right. Uh, but I'm going to just keep an eye on it as the game progressed. But that's something I did notice against sometimes man or blitz coverage that sometimes he struggles to get that edge defender or well, get to the edge before the defender and uh, seal that edge sometimes on, that, on the pass rush. Right, and it looks like I saw a little bit on that on that play that you were talking about. He kind of yeah. held him a little bit, but once Chase did that second burst to the outside, mm -hmm. I can definitely see it. Looks like Chase jumped off yeah. sides on that one. Looks like he was trying to guess the snap yeah. count. There. Yeah, that's another thing I noticed with Clemson. They, uh, I guess, the offensive line coach wanted them to stay still anytime they see somebody jump. I have seen that on film a few times with them. They don't even move. Gotcha. Uh, gotcha. So I guess they want the refs to see everything that the defense does. All right. So on that play, it looks like he steps back a little bit. Mm -hmm. So he moves back. He's looking at Chase. Chase tries to go to the inside. He gives him a little bit of a tap there. Mm -hmm. So far, see, there it is again. I think. Yeah, that foot speed. It. That foot, foot speed. speed on the outside rush. Uh, well, let, let me start off with, with the pros, you know, because – I try to – I know these are kids at the end of the day, so, you know, I don't want to be super, you know, critical. Um, right. But I love his motor. Um, that's one thing I noticed on the tape. He he tries. Ain't nothing worse than a big guy that's just lazy, you know. Right. So he puts in the work. The, the motor is there. The effort is there. Um, so I do respect that. And when it comes to that zone blocking – he gets upfield and he gets his hands on that second level, that third level defender. Right. If you are little, if you are smaller than him, you will feel it. Right. So I, I, I do respect that uh, for sure. Definitely, like like you said, seems to struggle a little bit with the with the outside speed there. Yeah. That's why he I'm gets very his hands on the dude, but it's it's like when they make that second move, he he kind of has to learn what to do. From that perspective, so he's coming down on the linebacker there, second level. That dude still makes the play. Yeah. Um, and that's why Ohio State is very interesting because anybody that knows the game or watch Ohio State, Ohio State probably runs 75, 80% man coverage every day. <laughs> so they pin their ears back and they let their line go, you know. So right. that's why this game is very interesting and you know, I'm very interested to see what he does because y'all in the AFC North, two of the teams y'all play run a lot of man. Right. The, 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 the Ravens and the Steelers. 
you know. Right. So, uh, this is, I'm very interested to see how his feet look on this game, especially as one of the future great pass rushers in the league, you know. Right. So. Especially with Chase Young. That's why I was like, all right, if we want to see him against what it'll really look like in the league. I think we got to look at what his film looks like against Chase Young. So there he goes up. Mm -hmm. Looks like Trevor cuts up on that one, gets a short game there. All right. I mean, on that one, Chase probably could have beat him, but he held him up enough to at least let let uh, Lawrence get the pass off. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you're probably going to see a lot of people do that against Chase Young just because they have that clock thinking, like, if we can get the ball yeah. out as quick as possible – that's going to help us against them. Now, that one, I think I kind of like that block. He got bull yeah. rushing. He got pushed back, but he still kind of held his own. See, Chase is trying to come. He's holding two guys. That's that's kind of wild. He had enough strength to hold both of those dudes with, with two different arms. Mm -hmm. it, it looked like his foot speed didn't show that much on the one that we were just talking about. Right. Because Chase went in the inside, and he beat him inside, but – that left guard was there too, so it kind of didn't make it look as bad. Right. Um, it, it looked like he's not having see, any problem with the other dude, but the other dude is in shape. And see, that was more of a zone block, and you see him go ahead and make some space. You see what I'm right. saying? Because really, Trevor Lawrence, if he kept it, he would have, if he would have kept that, he would have potentially gotten about 10, 20 yards. Right. Um, All right, holding it down. Now, that yeah. dude still beats him for the sack, though. Yeah. So, 54 still beat him. It looks like they're putting Chase on the other side. Mm -hmm. All right, so we got him over here, 33. Like you said, a little bit to that outside speed. Yeah, he's having some, it's that he's outside. Having some I said outside, and you know, a lot of those edge rushers are already kind of smaller, and they know they can't beat him inside, so they're gonna right. go outside a lot and use a speed. So, if they see that weakness on on film, he can expect to see a lot of that if you all decide to play him at the tackle position. Right. Um, that's the that's the scary part with him right. at the tackle is they showing that you won't beat him with power, but if they convert from power to speed. That's when he has some issues. Ooh, whoever was on that other side just let Lawrence get lit up. So he's holding his dude number eleven. Oh, that was Chase. <laughs> yeah. Chase just ran through that other dude. Yeah. That was kind of nasty. That was kind of nasty. It's Chase Young being Chase Young, man. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. You know it. That's why he was the number two draft pick overall in twenty uh twenty twenty draft. If it was right. Joe Burrow, Ooh, I like it that. Been the number one. I like that right there. So watch him on this play. Gets down, gets that guy, gets to the second yeah. level, push, pushes him down. I like that. I, he made a play like that against Wake Forest last year. That's why I said, if you're small, you're gonna he's gonna make you feel small if you if right. you get if he gets his hands on you. So I do appreciate that, you know. So he shows his strength in the open field. 100%. Right. Shows it again there. Throws yeah. him on the ground. Right. So when it comes to the run blocking, the zone blocking, he has mm -hmm. it. That's why if they push him into guard, right. he could be a good guard for you all. Yeah, not see, that's, I'm not saying he's going to be a pro bowler, none of that stuff, but right. he can be a serviceable guard, serviceable for, guard. Right. for four years because he's basically signed with you all for four years. So he could be right. a good four-year, potentially a re-signed prospect, you know, if he does well. I like how uh, fast he moves off here. You kind of see his his athleticism. Yeah, yeah. And I he mean, comes out looks like they were trying I to go after him, but it was covered. I remember Carmen. Carmen was a top recruit. He was a five star recruit coming out of high school. Yeah, he was. Uh, Ohio State wanted him. You know, a right. lot of teams wanted him. Florida State wanted him. Uh, so the athleticism that I don't think that's ever been a question with him. Right. Uh, right. Can you go back to that sack? Just that just happened. Let's see. I think it might have been I think on it's this after place. This. Yeah, I think it's after that. No, it must be after this one. Yeah, it 
this one looked like they were trying to go at the screen and yeah they read them yep they were on it that's another guy that's gonna be in y'all division is sean wade there you go oh, pause it if you can that is a common thing that i saw against wake forest with him now right I don't know if this is a flaw because this is these are questions that you have to ask coaches or not coaches players when you meet with them and coaches and stuff because you don't know what the protection call is right. but i've noticed that he struggles with when there's a nickel blitz or a db blitz from from that from his side right he never picks it up i don't know if he's taught that or if right. that's just running back not making the right protection or picking up the right side but I noticed he doesn't he he doesn't use his peripherals well to see the blitz. But I don't know mm -hmm. if he's taught that, so I don't know if that's a negative, right? Or either, but I noticed on the 2019 Wake Forest game, he let that happen twice. Um, okay. Like I said, I don't know. That's that's an interview question type right. because you don't know what he's told. You know, you right. don't know what protection. You know, so I don't know if that's a negative, but I have. That's the third time I've saw something like that with him. No, nah, facts, facts. No, that's a great thing to point out. Uh, yeah. Something that routinely happens. So that's something that we'll have to watch for at the next level for sure. Yeah. yeah. All right. So now we're getting some of his run blocking in. Also want to try to see what he can do in the run game. So he comes down two guys. All right. Not much there. Keeps that guy off of him. That guy probably could have made the sack there. Yeah, that was, that was a little too close for comfort. Right. So he puts that you, off. If, that's, if you if got that's, a long arm defender, he's going to grab that jersey and hold on to that jersey. That's <laughs> Miles know? Garrett or TJ yeah. Watt. Yeah, he's, that's, a, that's a dangerous play. Yeah. I like him. I, I, I like his motor. I like his effort. Mm -hmm. But I just don't know if, as a coach, I would feel safe putting him on that island right? every See? week in the NFL. I, I I just don't know if I could do it. Right. Uh, now, if they're projecting him to be an inside guy, second round, this might have been a good pick. So it looked like Chase kind of overshot that because Chase gets around him, but he, he pushed Chase around to the perimeter just enough for that angle to be outside of Lawrence on that last play. Can you go back to that if you don't mind? Yeah. Get another get another opinion on that. So. All right, right here. Pushing them off. Yeah. Yeah, it looked like Chase kind of overran. Overran that one, right. Yeah. It's another man coverage. Ooh. Ohio State fast, man. They and he still scores. Right. <laughs> boys fast. Boys both of them boys. Why he was picked in, because that explains why he was picked in the first round this past week. Right. To the Jags. Yeah. But yeah, I'm saying a lot of what you're saying. Like you you can try to like you really not gonna beat him with that bull rush like that. Mm -hmm. Like he's gonna he's gonna stand down on it. But when you try to go around to the edge, see he just missed trying to take out the the edge rusher there. You try to go low. He completely wanna, missed him. Yeah. And these are questions that you really want to ask in the interview because, like I said, you don't know. That's why these offensive of linemen are so hard because you don't know what they're really taught and you right. don't know what protection is called. So, I like that. yeah. Yeah. So that's why you kind of have to take it with a grain of salt. Nah, and I'm glad that you brought that up because. A lot of <clears throat> a lot of the times, just in general, you just don't know what's being called. Like that could have been his assignment on that play. That exactly. could have been somebody else's responsibility that messed up. And that's why sometimes it's hard when you get into analytics and stuff when you don't know that aspect of, of what's going on. Woo, Trevor. Trevor. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah, that was the play of the game right there. Yes, sir. All right. So he holds this thing down, keeps his dude. Man, Trevor went crazy on that one. Jackson, Jacksonville just got blessed on Thursday. With the <laughs> Man. <laughs> See, there it is. He struggles it's with outside it. Outside rush. Yeah. Outside. I just don't know. I don't know if they I – mean, like I said, it, it could potentially be fixed, you know. And that's why I said I don't want to be super critical. I mean, he's, what, 21, right. 22 years old kid. You know, right. so the growth, the growth opportunity is there. 
The right. question is, if the Bengals, with their interview process, do they feel that he has a desire to get better? That's something that they only know. You know? Right. Um, From what I heard, it is he is a dude that studies like a lot of film. He tries to – he he's pretty sharp, they said, when it comes to knowing what kind of rushes – edge rushers like to use um, mm -hmm. and he is super motivated to get better so I think from what we can see if he works mm -hmm. on that outside rush that's that's what I'm seeing that's giving him the most the most problems right but mm -hmm. the fact that he's going to be at the guard position you know is that something that's still going to be an issue for him I'm not so sure because he'll be more inside yeah. he'll have yeah. more help um, yeah. with that yeah unless he's going against Aaron Donald you right. know, inside. I mean, not too many. I mean, let me take this back. D tackles are a lot different than the edge rushers. I put it like that. When it comes to the speed and agility, you know, you right. have your your alphas like you know your Aaron Donalds and stuff like that. You know, but I, I think he would be. I think he'll be safer inside uh, than outside. But then again, it all depends on what your you all's plans for Jonah Williams moving forward with the injuries and stuff like that too. So and right. Riley, uh Riley Reef, I believe y'all picked him up too. So right. it depends on y'all plans on on those guys. Yeah, the plan as far as for Riley Reef to play right tackle, the plan is really for Jackson Carmen to play inside at, at guard. Um mm -hmm. and it's either going to be left guard or right guard uh, from what I've been mm -hmm. hearing. And and then the plan is potentially you know, seeing how he plays, if they do let Riley Reef walk off into the sunset next season, mm -hmm. then maybe they give him a look at potentially playing right tackle. But he's not going to be at the left tackle position. But as yeah. you know, in the NFL, sometimes that almost doesn't matter because they'll take a Chase Young and line him up all over the place. So he's right. still going to have snaps against some of the premium edge rushers like the Miles Garrett, especially when he used to go in and kill Bobby Hart. Look at that athleticism from Chase. That's crazy. Yeah, and the play before that, he killed them on the outside again. But outside. the play before that, uh, Jackson, I wanted to show Jackson's effort. He got up to the second level. Uh, he was very fast. Uh, so I did like that. Like I said, in the run game, I don't think he's a liability. I think he's a very big asset in the run game. Right there. Uh, yep. The only question is, can he hold his own when the, when they show some man coverage, they pin their ears back and let the – let the let the D line just go at him. That's right. that's the question. Right. Uh, I think he'll be fine inside against that, but just on the outside. And Chase Young is projected to be great, but let's just be honest, he's not even the best edge rusher out there right now. You know, right. so and he's having the field day almost. He's getting all. He's getting close to Trevor almost every every almost shot. Every play. So right. Uh, so that's the only thing I would kind of be careful. And this is this is the uh this is the perfect time in the game because this is when the offensive line is worn down and this is when mm -hmm. Chase just like you said pins his ear back his ears back and just goes crazy. Like this is around that time, especially with the clutch. I wish they would show uh what the score and stuff is and the, the moments in the game. He's doing just enough to keep him away, but but you know, if Chase just makes certain moves like that, he could have gotten there. Like in the league, there's exactly. probably exactly. someone's probably there. And to the point where you look at this and you start questioning Chase and his Ooh. effort on certain Ooh. plays because he probably could have had a few more sacks than he actually did. Right. That you was know. that looked like a lucky play. How did I even end up an interception for a pick six? So here, watch this. Chase comes around. The other dude hits him first. Oh, it was a fumble. That was kind of did, some luck on did that. Did the receiver one. even have the ball long enough for it to be a fumble? Not really. It didn't look like it too much to me. So it must have given it back to him. All right. But boom. Ooh. Let me see. He holds up against Chase on that one. That's probably what I it love is. him. I love him against his own. He, he does that, well. Was that a zone? zone? Was that a zone yeah, play that. for him on this one? He came. It looked like he was coming here for this dude. He left Chase wide open. I don't know whose no, assignment know. it was. Man, Thirty-nine beat him to the spot on that one. Ooh. I mean, this sometimes is I, against Chase Young. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I think he just kind of plays a little too high. Right. Um. Need to work on this pad level a little bit. 
Right. But, I mean, it's kind of hard to say that when you because how how tall is he? About six. I think six, he's six, six five, five, six six. I think it's really six five and a half. So some people give him six six. But you can tell, like, it's like night and day when he's going against somebody that isn't Chase Young. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. So that's why it's like, uh, that's why I don't want to be super critical, you know? Right. Right. Uh, but like not, there. You don't have access to the Miami game on here, do you? Nah, I, I, we got the Wake Forest. We got Ohio State from um, 2020. We also had that one. Um, from what I heard, I think he did good against Boogie Basham. Well, and I know I know we're on the Bengals pod, but Quincy Roche, I believe is how you pronounce his last name. Yep. He 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 gave him a little headache uh, right. in Miami. And he, yeah, he just went to the Steelers. SMU. Exactly. That's why I said I know this is a billion a Bengals pod. Right. But and Quincy Roche, no disrespect, he's no Chase Young. Right. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> Uh, you know, so the fans, I, I think you should go back and look at that one on YouTube, but um, yeah. The only thing that I can say, though, is I think at the end of the game, they, I, don't, I don't know if Chase had any sacks in this game. Yeah. So he, he definitely had a good amount of hurries. Definitely. Definitely had a lot of pressures and stuff in there. Yeah. All right. Ohio State runs so much man coverage. It's crazy. <laughs> right. It's like Straight my man up. against yours. Like, see who going to win. Yeah, just roll the That's why they have so many good corners, except, I mean, Sean Wade, mm -hmm. they probably shouldn't have played uh, that with Sean Wade because – Monta Smith was tearing him up. Yeah. And I'm interested, and honestly, if uh, I'm interested to see what Baltimore plays him, because I think he's better inside and way better than he is outside. Right. Sean Wade might be a better safety than corner, right. to be honest with you. Right. No, I'm with you on that. And that boy draft stock, Devonta, he might, he might tell Devonta he owe him some money because uh, – First round, the fifth round. After that one, he could hit though, because he actually he got ejected this game for um, for the hit he laid on um, Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, yeah, we saw that earlier. So yeah, somebody just said Wade is a safety. Yeah, he's That's a safety. Right. Uh, you could be. I want him in the box somewhere, anywhere on the perimeter. No, Fact. inside cool. only. So you said that you also watched some other games in terms of you said Wake Forest and I think you said Miami as well. What do you and what are Notre your Dame. and Notre Dame? What were your overall thoughts on just him? Like what are some good things, some weaknesses, and just your overall thoughts on it? Um, I like his uh run blocking. I love his agility to get a feel in the zone in the zone scheme. Um mm -hmm. I, I like his uh his mean demeanor, I like his uh his drive, his motor. Um, he's aggressive. He plays big. Um, like I said, nobody likes a big softy. You know, if you're big, we want you to play big. And right. I think he does that. Um, I've seen him still made a few of people in the run game, uh, some DNs to where, and it, but I've only seen it in the zone run game. But once right. he uh, gets his hands on them, certain guys, he still makes them. Saw a few pancakes on a few, um, stuff like that. So, I do like that, so I definitely want to start off with the pros. So I think sometimes these people lean too much on what they can't do instead of what they can do. So right. I do want to, you know, call them out for that. Um, the only thing that I'm afraid of is uh, his protection against man coverage. Uh, when the defense pins their uh, ears back, does he have the foot speed or the agility to, uh, to do it? Um, his hand placement. Um, I saw a few guys put a few hands. Like if he goes against somebody that actually uses their hands like, like they're supposed to, got some finesse moves, some swims, bending. I could see him having a problem with it because sometimes he plays so upright. And right. that's just a testament of being so big to where he can't really, he doesn't have that, I was where I say agility, I guess is the best way I can think of to, to match that. Right. Um, but other than that, um, and like I said, 
on the I know you can go back and look at it, the Wake Forest game he uh, of last year, 2019. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I don't know what the protection call was, but he struggles to read that blitzer coming from the inside, whether it's a nickel blitz or outside linebacker blitz. I don't know if he's taught to where the running back just missed the block or what. So that's why I don't know if that's a negative or positive. Because I don't know what he's told. Right. But uh, I project him better as a guard, personally. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you all, I mean, y'all can move some pieces around because y'all have some uncertainty on the line anyway. So I'm just interested to see what happens in training camp, to be honest, at this point. No, nah, that's real. Um, we got a question here for you, actually. Hi, JD. Who do you think the oh. Bengals should have taken? Oh, man. That's a good question. Um, Because he was in the second round. Well, you can't really go wrong with these Notre Dame guys on that line right now. Uh, right. I want to say I'm a Tampa fan. I want to say we got one in the third round, I believe. Right. Bank, uh, did y'all get Banks? I don't know if it was Banks. Or I can't Hanks, remember. Hanksy or something like that? Hanksy. 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 Yeah. And he was playing right tackle, so I'm interested to see where we play him because we have Wirfs, and I think he's a staple. He's not going nowhere on that right side. So I right. think he might get pushed inside too. Um, but to be honest with you, I would be lying if I said I just had a list of prospects that I think you all should have picked. Uh, but I think for if you all decide to move him at guard, Second round, I think it's a, I think it's a decent pick. Now, if you want to put on, you think you could put him on the perimeter, and think you have your solid tackle, a down every down tackle, then I would say that it might have been a reach. Right. That's so the best way I can answer that. What about uh, Eichenberg? A lot of people talking about Eichenberg from Notre Dame because you mentioned Notre Dame. Do you think that he could have potentially played guard for the Bengals, or do you think he was more of a tackle? Oh, uh, because where did he end up going? I can burn with the Miami, I think, the Dolphins. Okay. Um, I think he would have been a solid option for right. sure. Because uh, right. I'm interested to see what you all do schematically. Like we've had some off the, you know, off the off the tape, you know, conversations. Right. I'm trying to see what you all do schematically because Clemson run kind of more like a vertical uh, power run scheme. Right. I've known you all to be kind of like a zone run scheme. So I'm trying to see if you all are making the change, you know, especially with the chase picks. So I was trying to put the pieces together with the picks that you all made to kind of see where you all are going schematically, to be honest with you. Yeah, from what I from what I've heard in terms of Frank Pollock, he definitely wants to do the zone run scheme. Zach okay. Taylor is pretty much running for the most part, a mixture of the Rams and LSU offense. Like a lot of it is a lot of like there's probably like 10 to 12 plays of what they ran at LSU. I don't know if now they're going to install even more of that offense, being that they that they just added Jamar Chase. Uh, but the interesting thing is originally when he first took over and they were just doing the Rams offense, um, they didn't know if they could they could marry. Now it could be that he just wanted to bring in Jim Turner as his guy. Um, mm-hmm. But they're supposed to take kind of like that West Coast and and uh, mm-hmm. offense from LSU and kind of marry that with what he's got with the Rams offense. Mm-hmm. Uh, if they go to West Coast, uh, Jamar Chase, if healthy, y'all might have y'all a five, six-time Pro Bowler. Over yeah. There. <laughs> <laughs> so going to a West Coast scheme would definitely make that first-round pick look very great. Definitely, definitely. Were there any other games that you wanted to look at, or do you think we pretty much, we pretty much uh, know what he is by now? Was that something similar to, to what you kind of saw on those other those other tapes? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I think that's pretty much what I've seen. Um, but you know, you can never watch enough film. So hey, the more variables, the better. Um, variables, I should say, is uh, is better. So. Right. If you want to go well, through some more, we can. I mean, yeah, I'll take a look at let's um let's pull up Boogie Basham. I feel bad because I feel like I set him up because I went and grabbed Chase Young. But um let's take a look at his film <laughs> against Boogie Basham. And the other thing is that was you know a year prior to him or two years prior to him getting drafted. So let's see if he cleaned up any of that stuff on his next uh his next film that I got here. So We'll take a look at um, – we won't look at all of it, but we'll just take a look at some plays uh, from his Wake Forest film. So let's get this lined up. 
And it looks like this one actually is going to show some of the the score and everything because sometimes I like to see, like, what down is it? Is it third down? Is it first down? Game situation. Right. Ooh, just threw dude off. Okay, this is already looking a little better. That's what I said. In the run game, he's he's vicious. You know, he's trying to hit somebody. And that's big for us, especially with Joe Mixon, not having the best run blocking. Look at him. That's a pancake right there. That's a pancake. You know, so that's why I say if you put him in guard, man, run game, you can so Joe Mixon, he could do he could do some damage. Right. And he's already a stud regardless, but right. Uh, man, that other dude, Basham, Basham got off on that other dude. <laughs> yeah. All right, pushing on. He's looking, he's looking more, I'm not gonna say more, I feel like I wanna say more polished. Like, even when you look at his hand technique, boom, boom, boom. It's almost like I'm watching a different different player a little bit. It's, it's more clean. It's more fluid. He's pushing back more. Honestly, he looks nastier. Right. <laughs> now, I don't know if it's just because it's the beginning of the game and he's juiced up. Right. You know, but. Uh, now, I do know. I think um, I think this was after. The off season where he went and worked with Willie Anderson. So see that? Okay. Boom. Okay. Then he, yeah. Now yeah, he's he trying to hit that somebody dude on his butt, but yeah, yeah he's he trying to hit somebody. Boom. Guess that dude comes off of him, and that's Basham. That's Boogie yeah. Basham. Yeah. Just went in the third round. So all right, I'm hold happy on. You said that. I'm happy you said that about the different years because I know this is a quarterback. If you look at Zach Wilson, uh, in 2019 and 2020, two different people. Two different people. You Two can see people. everything's just cleaner. Yeah. Now, I mean, obviously, we probably aren't going to consider Wake Forest in the same caliber as Ohio State, but just looking at him, like, he's more sure of what he's doing. Like, even that right there, that was something he used to struggle with, but you see how he extended his arm at the end of it? So now he's got this thing where he's still pushing on, whereas before – when Chase would do that, he would just go around them, and there was nothing there to to stop the defender from from getting to the to the quarterback. So it looks like he's tried to at least make some adjustments for that outside speed run. That he just look like he just must do. It. Right. right. <laughs> he just must do it on that play. All right. Yeah, he, like he's not the, He's nasty. I wish he was. Well, then again, I don't know if I'm asking for too much out of the offensive lineman. Like his. He's not the smoothest looking player. Right. But he gets it done. Right. You know, and they really at the end of the day, that's all you mm-hmm. that's all that really matters. Like he's even touching guys. What what's funny is look at this one. Look at this one real quick. Boom, boom. Remember we talked about him struggling with that blitz in this mm-hmm. situation? Look at him mm-hmm. in, in 2020 compared to what he did in, in, in uh 2019. Now it's it's very slight, but watch what he does. Boom, just tries to at least get a hand on that dude to try to disrupt him some kind of way. Exactly. Whereas before, he was just letting that dude just fly through there. Right. Using those peripherals, you know. Right. Even if it's just nothing but a little tap, a little chip, you know, something to slow down the rush. You know? Right. Something to stop that guy from getting there. Yeah. And a point five we- second delay can change a lot in the NFL. You know, so. All right. Boom, uh, going at him again, like. Yeah, this is. I'm glad we decided to look at this film. Yeah. Drastically different than than what we just saw the, the year prior to this. And to be right. fair, I kind of like watching the lower end, the, the top guys go against lower end competition. You mm-hmm. know, because you know everybody's gonna come with it when you know you're on national TV, you prime time playing against Ohio State. Right. Everybody's gonna come with it. What you gonna do against a random UAB? Right. Or, are you going to play as hard? Are you going? Yeah. Play are you going to show up against Fam U because you know they don't have as many nowhere as near the athletes? So I want to see that same tenacity or more against right. Lord. Right. And you're you right. Know. Like even when it and also ooh, also when it's uh do that out. Um, also when it's you know third quarter, fourth quarter, you up yeah. by by twenty or something. Are you still you still go? Right. Right. Yeah. That tells a lot about the character and exactly. what you can do. Exactly. There we go so there. They, no, they're not playing anybody. Those are games I want to see. I want to see if they're going to come to play regardless. Right. Because, I mean, it's still NFL. I know it's teams. some teams or some players are better, but it's still the NFL. 
You still right. gotta respect the game every week, you know. Right. So pushing down, throwing down. Like I, I really like what he's doing in this game. Right. That's yeah, completely. Different. I didn't. I didn't have access now, to this. One. I didn't see this one. Now this one. Now he did have this dude waits and comes in and makes the tackle. Um, but he was paying attention to Boogie Basham, so I, I can't be too mad at him. I'd probably be more worried about Boogie Basham than that other dude at the same time, too. And like you said, in terms of the run game, he's moving people. He's, moving. he's, he's definitely he's a moving. people mover. Right. Whoop. So, I'm, I mean, I think that might be all that I need to really see from this one, though. I don't know about you. I don't know if you need yeah, to see any more, but I like it. I, I like what I'm saying. I like what I'm seeing in them. Now, after this, let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. After this, how you feel about playing a man at tackle after watching this game? Uh, I think he's got some potential. Like it, it clearly looks like he's worked on some things. Like even like just there, his technique is much better. And I'm not. I can't. I don't speak for technique just because you know I never play offensive alignment. I don't know exactly what they're supposed to do. I'm just talking about in comparison to the game that I just watched him in 2019 versus Chase Young to this, you can tell he's more polished now. Um, now I know behind the scenes, like I said, I believe he worked with Willie before this season. Um, so you can kind of tell that he's worked on his craft. And I think that that opens the door for the potential at the tackle position. Whereas based in 2019, I would probably be scared to death to put him at tackle in the league after what we saw him do against Chase Young. Now when you see him just Mm -hmm. shutting Boogie Basham down like it's nothing, like he's already ready and prepared, like he – just the way that he's reacting to different people, it's a different person, it seems like, that's wearing the jersey. So I think, like, look at that. That, um, I think that that shows that he's willing to dedicate time to his craft to get better. Um, There's the outside rush again. Like, that's the only thing I think he probably even needs to just master. And I think he's he's shown in this game, at least, that he's gotten better of it off of it in the offseason. And I'm pretty sure Willie probably noticed that and was like, hey, you got to work on this outside rush and figure out how to stop that because people are just pretty much seeing that on film and they're going to know that that's the way to rush you. Um, so from what I've seen, he looks like a guy that can, can drastically improve – um, if Frank Pollock coaches him up and Willie Anderson coaches him up, I think he could play right tackle. Now, left tackle, that's a different story. But right tackle, yeah. if he can if he can um, make these vast improvements like he's doing, just completely shutting Boogie Basham out of this game and just all of the technique that I'm seeing, he's look, he looks like a much cleaner player, much yeah. cleaner. Not as sloppy. It, it's kind of crazy because it's like I'm glad I went to 2020 just to see – what he looked like because um after we watched that chase young game it's like okay not to say like they shouldn't trust him at left tackle but you almost wonder like okay what was it that led to them keeping him there look at how he's coming out like bro yeah as i said the yeah. effort and the motor you can't teach yeah you, know? you can't so teach that i can work with somebody who work who tries you know um right. you know and i'm pretty sure coaches can appreciate that um, right now, one thing I do want to say that is a pro that I forgot. I want to say I only saw from the few games I did watch one flag, maybe. Mm-hmm. So, so not he's, not many a flags. he's not a holder, he's not a holder. No now, outsides. I think, I think Quincy Roche Roche forced one on him against Miami. It might have been him or no, one of those games. I think he got one, right? But I haven't seen it be an issue. You know, right. uh, you know, it may be somewhere he gets beat outside and you're like, hey, instead of getting the sack, let me just get the flag. You know, so he may have to say, hey, if I know I can't, if he, gonna, he may kill my quarterback, I may just have to just get the flag. You know, right. so you right. know, sometimes the flags can kind of save you at the same time. It doesn't look great on paper or, you know, in game. But but it's better to, to get the flag than to get somebody diving into a quarterback's knee or or something yeah. like that. It's like Dion said, hey, I'd rather get a flag than you going to touchdown and you score a touchdown. Right. Facts. Well, <laughs> so, facts. That's big facts. <laughs> so I'd rather put you on the one yard line and try to rush it in than you give up a touchdown on me. 
So. Right. No, nah, that's real. A lot of people saying they wish we could pull up the, the Miami said we would, but they will flag this video. Uh, we got 173 people watching. We truly appreciate y'all. Um, was you. there any any closing remarks that you had, bro? Oh, no, man. Just, uh, hey, man, thank you. Hey, keep doing what you're doing. I love your platform. I'm subscribed. I get the notifications. And I'm a Bucks fan, but, you know, hey, continue to do what you're doing. Strive for greatness. And, uh, you know, good luck to the Bengals this year. I'm going to be watching from afar. Yes, sir. We're going to bring you back on, bro. We got some other people to, to bring on and everything. So um, y'all get used to, to uh, seeing JD here. And then he's also got some stuff that he's coming with on the way as well. Um, this has been the Cut the Tape on. Appreciate you guys for watching. Um, and as usual, I'll leave you guys with a who day, all day, every day, and especially on Sunday.